Now we're going to look at electron group geometry, also known as Vesper theory, that tells us something about the shapes of molecules as well as the bond angles in a molecule. So VESPER is an acronym for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion, which helps us describe the shapes of molecules. Pair is not the best name. It should be group, because when we look at a single, double, or triple bond, we treat that as one group, even though it has more than one pair of electrons. This model helps us figure out the three-dimensional shape of a molecule. Lewis structures and skeletal structures tell us about how atoms are connected to one another, but don't show us anything about the 3D shape of the molecule. Let's look at examples of the different types of shapes of molecules we will explore. The first is linear. When we have a central atom with two groups around it, we will have a linear structure. Notice we're only looking at the carbon, which is our central atom, and it has two groups each of which is a double bond to oxygen. There are two groups around the central atom, therefore the geometry is linear. Notice that we're only looking at what's attached to the carbon as the central atom and not looking at the lone pairs that are attached to the oxygen because they are the outer atoms or the terminal atoms of the molecule. With two groups around the central atom, we have a linear geometry. Next, we'll look at trigonal planar. Trigonal planar is characterized by having three groups around the central atom. And we'll see two examples here of trigonal planar molecules. First, we'll look at CH2O. We see two groups with the hydrogen atoms and a third group with a double bond to oxygen. Notice that the double bond counts as one group so that we have a total of three groups. Again, the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen are not relevant to the geometry around the central atom because those are on the terminal atoms. We can also look at BF3, which has three single bonds, giving us three groups around the central atom, and so its geometry is also trigonal planar. So if we have three groups around the central atom, we have trigonal planar geometry. Next, we will look at tetrahedral geometry. We're going to start with CH4, which has four groups, all bonding groups, and so we know this is tetrahedral geometry. Remember that Lewis structures show how atoms are connected to one another. They don't necessarily give us explicit information about the angles between atoms. Next, we have NH3, which has three bonding groups and one non-bonding group. The non-bonding group is treated just like the bonding groups. Nitrogen has four groups around the central atom, therefore it is tetrahedral geometry. We are worried about the lone pairs on nitrogen because they are directly on the central atom and not on a terminal atom. So we do look at lone pairs on the central atom. Next, we'll look at water, and sometimes you'll see water drawn in a couple of different ways in its Lewis structure. Either way, we see that we have four groups around the central atom. We do count the lone pairs on oxygen in water because oxygen is the central atom. So we have four groups around the central atom, which tells us that we have tetrahedral geometry. What is the electron group geometry of CH2Cl2? Carbon is our central atom and has four groups around it, so it will be tetrahedral. What is the electron group geometry of HCN? When we look at carbon, which is our central atom, we see that it has two groups, so we will have linear geometry. What is the electron group geometry of PO4, 3 minus? We have four groups around the central phosphorus atom, so we have tetrahedral geometry. The lone pairs are on the terminal oxygen atoms and do not affect the geometry around the central phosphorus atom. 
We treat the single and double bonds exactly the same way. Each of those represents a group, so we have a total of four groups, even though there are five bonds to phosphorus. Note that this is not a structure you would be expected to draw, but given the structure, you should be able to determine the geometry. What is the electron group geometry of SO3? We have three groups around the central sulfur atom, so we have trigonal planar geometry. The lone pairs on the oxygen do not affect the geometry around the central sulfur atom.